Okay, I'm ready again. <laughs> ready? Welcome to the Corps of Engineers' third outreach presentation. My name is Sue Bright. I'm a regulatory project manager with the Corps of Engineers. I work in the Detroit District Sault Ste. Marie field office evaluating permits in the eastern upper peninsula and northern lower Michigan. The Corps' regulatory program makes extensive use of general permits that, be, that can be issued in a relatively short, fast time in our teller to fit the regional needs. And these permits are known as regional permits and are for minor work structures and discharges of dredge and fill material in naval waters of the United States. Activities authorized by the Detroit District's regional permits are expected to cause only a minimal adverse impact to the environment. The Detroit District has 25 regional permits in the state of Michigan. And this presentation centers on our district's five, five most commonly issued regional permits, which are docks, spring piles, boat hoists, removal of structures, and access steps and stairways. The most common regional permit issued in the Detroit district is for docks that are permanent or seasonal. In order to issue a regional permit for a dock, we look at six criteria. Is the dock a reasonable length in accordance with the existing dock lengths in the area? Does the dock allow for flowage of literal material and water? Does the dock allow for more than four pleasure crafts to be moored? Is the dock going to be constructed of non-contaminated material? Railroad ties and telephone poles contain creosote and are considered contaminated material. Uh, does the length of the dock allow for a similar dock length to be constructed on the opposite shore and allow for a fairway width of 1.5 times its length. Also, does the dock include a deck segment less than 144 square feet? With respect to docks and other structures, the Corps has no regulations specifying how close or far from property line docks and other structures may be installed. Our regulations are largely looking at impacts to navigation. There are several types of docks. This picture depicts the crib dock, which is commonly used in areas that experience high ice movement and heavy ice and it's not practical to seasonally install a dock. And this is a picture of a crib dock showing that it has openings allowing for water flowage. And the stone is, for the fill in the timber cribs, is larger then the openings in the crib structure, or otherwise the rock would be falling into the water. And the cribs consist of non-contaminated timbers. In Michigan, floating docks are generally installed and removed on a seasonal basis. Our regional permits cover repeated removal and installation of the dock. No, a new permit is not required every spring to install the dock. Another type of dock is an open pile dock, and these docks may be permanent or seasonal, and it depends on how what the ice conditions are 
and the effort required to remove and install the dock each season. What is a reasonable length? A reasonable length is a length that is consistent with the length of other docks in the area and gives the property owner a boatable depth to moor their boat, as depicted in the picture. Also, when reviewing an application under a regional permit, we consider the fairway width. The fairway width is that length of your dock cannot extend beyond a point such that a structure of similar size may be placed on the opposite shore and still maintain a fairway width of 1.5 times the length of the structure. This is an example of how the fairway width is determined. The bank to bank width is 73 feet. The property owner on the north side proposes the dock to be 10 feet in length. Therefore, the property owner on the other side has to be able to install a 10 foot long dock and there has to be a fairway width of 1.5 times length which in this case would be 15 feet. So as you see, the fairway width is 53 feet. So the, it is equal or greater than 15 feet. This is an example of a planned view drawing. So when applying for a permit, a plan view drawing is required, indicating the dimensions of the dock and the location of the proposed dock on your property. We also really appreciate it when these drawings include depictions of neighboring structures. This is an example of a cross-section view drawing which is depicting the ordinary high water mark, the length of the dock, the elevation at the end of the dock to the water level and to the contour of the lake bed. And please supply the date that these elevations were taken. Another common regional permit that is issued out of the Detroit district is for spring piles or pile clusters. There are three criteria that are considered in order for a regional permit be issued. The location is reasonable and consistent with similar structures in the vicinity. The pilings are constructed of non-contaminated material and would not cause the total number of watercraft to exceed four. As noted in an earlier slide, slide regarding docks, the Corps has no regulations specifying how close or far from property lines structures may be installed. The focus of the Corps' review is largely looking at impacts on navigation. And this is a picture of a pile cluster. Another common regional permit is for boat hoist. There are four criteria that are reviewed in order to issue a regional permit. We look at, is the hoist to be enclosed? Is the hoist for private use? What is the fairway width? And will the boat hoist cause no more than four watercrafts to be moored? This is a picture of a boat hoist stationed between two docks. And this is a 
picture of a jet ski hoist. And this is a plan view drawing of a boat hoist showing the dimensions and the position of the hoist relative to the dock and the shoreline. This is an example of a cross-section view drawing showing the distance to the shoreline, the width of the hoist, and the depth of the water. Dilapidated structures can break away and or fall below the water's surface, posing a hazard to navigation. So we have limited resources to enforce removal of structures, which is another common regional permit that's issued out of the Detroit district. That said, all our permits specify that such non-serviceable structures should be removed from the water, and we would consider such non-removed structures as out of compliance with CORE's authorization in the event that they were subject to litigation. An example is if someone hits a submerged rotted piling with their boat. And this picture depicts the dock that requires removal before it becomes a hazard to navigation. Another common regional permit issued out of the Detroit district is for access steps and or stairways. This also includes ladders attached to the waterward face of a seawall. There are four criteria that are considered for a regional permit to be issued. The stairs must be constructed of non-contaminated materials. The stairs are not to be more than four feet wide. The landing area shall be not more than 16 square feet. And if the landing area is in a wetland, it must be constructed on pilings. Uh, so the terms and conditions of the regional permits can be found on the Detroit District Regulatory website under, under general permit types. And this is a picture of a stairway adjacent to a seawall. And with your application, you provide a photo of the site. This may, be, may speed up the time frame that it takes to process your application and may eliminate the need for a site visit. We are happy to assist with any questions that you may have about applications or requirements. The end.